I wanted to start putting down the cedar decking, but before I could do that, I had to put together the outside railing because the center post of it goes all the way down to the metal frame of the deck and it'll be welded in place. So I was gonna have to notch out the outside board around this metal post. So first gotta get the metal post in place. I'm gonna use stainless steel cable running horizontally around the railing to fill in the open spaces and make sure the railing is safe. I drilled some holes in this upright post, which I'll later run the cable through. After getting it centered and making sure it was square, I welded it in place. It's kind of hard welding because the wind was blowing my shielding gas all over the place. Usually I kind of like having the wind carry my gas away from me, but I guess when I'm welding, that's the one exception. I added a couple bottom pieces, which I held in place using some angle and clamps. I really like using the clamps because I can make sure I have those set at the right height, and then I just have to set the metal tubing in place. There were big dark rain clouds off yonder in the distance and I felt like it was going to rain really soon. So I took the time to get this railing painted. I really wanted to jump in on the cedar decking, but I knew that if I took the time to paint the railing now, it would mean less time prepping it before painting it in the future after a coat of rust was on it. All right, time for the fun part. I really love the look of these old ragged pieces of plywood I was using temporarily that I scrounged up from all corners of the farm, but I just didn't think they would hold up in the long run, so I decided to replace it with cedar deck and I stained. It was a real pain in the butt. The longest cedar boards I could find was 16 foot, and my deck is 16 foot 4 inches, so I was going to have to use two pieces for each span. I'm sure I could have found 20 footers somewhere, but then I'd be wasting 4 foot per board, and I'm sure 20 footers would be a lot more expensive than these 16 footers, which were already much more expensive than I thought they were going to be. Notching out for the metal corner post, I used a Forstner bit to somewhat match the radius of the corner of the metal post. Just kidding, spade bit. I goofed on that in a past video. Now that the corner was notched out, I could slide it in far enough to mark and notch out the hole for the center support of the railing. I used a jigsaw for this, which worked fairly well, at least well enough to pass my standards. Just like always, I left it too tight of a fit, but a little persuasion with a board got it into place. I used a countersink bit to drill out a hole for every screw. I just didn't want to risk splitting any of the boards. I'd hopefully picked up just the exact amount I needed of the cedar decking. I decided I was going to take my time to lay out the screw holes locations. I thought that spacing them evenly and in a straight line would probably go a long ways to making it look nicer. I had to start with the outside board because I wanted it to be a whole board. I didn't want to have to rip a board in half. And then I was going to work back towards the barn from there and then use the partial board against the barn where it's a little more hidden and not quite as obvious. So my plan was to just keep scooting the plywood sheets 
back as I needed to, giving me something to stand on as I worked. I didn't exactly mean to do that, but I think it still counts. Right? I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn if I tried. Or maybe I could, actually. A couple things definitely sped up this process. I hauled up my chop saw, which gave me a lot more accurate cuts than my skill saw. And I also ran up to my parents' house and stole my dad's drill gun. So I wasn't having to constantly change bits. And I also grabbed my tool belt, which really helped keep all my stuff organized. My buddy Pat helped me build a small deck on my house a while ago, and he taught me the trick of using a nail to space the boards apart. Works pretty good to keep it nice and even. I wanted to keep cranking on the deck, I was having a lot of fun and really didn't want to stop, but this weather was just not cooperating. So I headed inside, hoping I'd get some better deck building weather the following day. I know a more common way of laying deck boards is to leave them long and then cut them all off in a straight line after they've all been screwed in place. But I just decided I wanted to cut them to length before I screwed them down. Not sure exactly why, just decided that was the plan of attack. The ends of the boards had stained on them already, so I guess it was kind of nice not having to cut them off. Yeah, that's the reason I'm going with. I think the skies were making up for their nasty weather on me the previous day. Apology accepted. I came up half a board short. I couldn't believe it. Guess it'll have to be a quick trip to town tomorrow to pick up one more. I learned the hard way that these pressure treated boards left on the deck overnight in the rain ruins the stain underneath them. So I'll have to fix that later. I just put three or four screws in each board, enough to hold it in place, thinking that I would come back in afterwards and drill them all in a nice straight line. I was sure when I was laying the boards out to stagger all the seams. I think it looks a lot nicer than having one seam all the way across the whole deck. I just kind of randomly looked for a joist that I hadn't used in five or six boards to butt the two boards together on. I felt like I was making some good progress. After having walked way too much on the roof and then walked on the deck joist, it was really nice to have a nice surface to work on and build the rest of this deck. <laughs> 